on sale. And that's where that last item is going to go. That's where basically the debit is. In this case, we're going to increase the net income because that loss brought down the net income. We're going to bring it back up. So we're going to copy that. I'm going to put that right here. Paste it one, two, three. And that's going to be uh, from this number. Now note that that, that process, if, if we did that process uh, on the go and we didn't check that we were in balance and whatnot, we could easily throw ourselves out of balance trying to figure out you know that type of process. But in this case, we can now see that the uh, depreciation now matches. So we're okay. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to un-highlight uh, it. I'm going to make this blue again. It was blue, right? And let's move down to our next yellow account here. So we, we can now see that we went to the cash paid for the purchase of equipment. You know, we already adjusted that, uh, meaning we adjusted that for basically the cost of the equipment now based on the adjustment that we just had. Now we're going to go back and see um, if we finance part of that. Did we bought we bought equipment for 113 250 that's true now we just need to see if that was financed or not we might have a loan out on that so we want to look at that journal entry and see if we paid all cash for that or if some of that was financed again we would probably look at the general ledger in real life here we're going to look at our set of data that they generally give us in these types of problems so we purchased equipment uh for in this case uh the cost of three one uh 113,250, but we only paid 43,250 of cash. So when we think about a cash flow statement, we paid 43,250. The rest is part of that long-term note. So we have a long-term note of the 70,000. So we're gonna need to put that information into our, our flow statement in some way. I'm gonna think about the journal entry first and then think about where they should go. When we purchased the equipment,